being together with Kate and Todd, who are intense, phenomenal artists, where you just go, yay, <laughs> you know, you just want to run with it. Hi there, this is The Awardist on Entertainment Weekly. I'm Dave Cardger. Very happy to be here with Nina Haas from the movie Tar. Great to see you. Great to see you, Dave. You know, when you popped up in Tar, I thought, oh, I know her from Homeland. Do you feel like that, prior to this, is maybe something that you're most known for here in the U.S.? You know, the showrunner from Homeland, Alex Ganza, he saw me in The Most Wanted Man. So quite some people have seen that as well. So that was the, let's call it the Kickstarter. Right, I <laughs> love know? it. Yeah. What was the process for you to be cast in this fantastic role in Tar? My English agent, Roger Chartres, he called me and he said, Nina, Todd Field really wants to make a Zoom call with you. I don't know what this is about. No one knows, it's top secret. If you're here, then you already know who she is. Lydia Tarr is many things. As a conductor, Tarr began her career with the Cleveland Orchestra, Chicago Symphony Orchestra, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, until she had last arrived here at our own New York Philharmonic. In 2013, Berlin elected Tarr as its principal conductor, and she's remained there ever since. Lydia Tarr has also written music for the stage and screen. She is one of only 15 EGOTs, meaning those who have won all four major entertainment awards. Thank you for joining us, Maestro. Thank you. We had this lovely, lovely Zoom call, and Todd, even there, he wouldn't tell me much about what this was all about. And he just said, uh, Kate was the lead, and that was like, whoa. And then he said, yeah, I don't know if this is enough meat for you, but just have a read. I read it and I was really blown away by the script. Because you put it down and you go, we're going to make a film like that? Someone's mm. gonna wanna do it with us? A production company is behind this. And, uh, and I was just so taken by it, by, because you really wanna read it again. Right. Because you feel you've missed something, you know, and I have the same feeling watching the film. You, you want to go back and you, because it's so nuanced, it's so fine, it's there's, it touches so many relevant topics of our time. When you watch the movie, it feels different from anything that you've seen before. How did it read different from anything? How did you know reading it that this was going to be a film that was unique? Who dares to start a film with three consecutive scenes that are, one is the inter an interview that lasts for 10 minutes, the next one is a talk in a restaurant that lasts for nearly 10 minutes, and then I think follow the, the Juliet scene. Right. Yeah? So that is a one taker of eight minutes. You enter this classical music world, you hear lots of names, you hear a lot about what conducting is about. You learn about time and the essence of time and things like that. So you're being slowly lured into this world. It takes the, the audience seriously, I find. So that is very special and unique already. You don't have to know anything no. about that world. You just get informed that this person really knows what she's talking about. Right. So that th th these three scenes establish that really in a phenomenal way. And, and when you read that, you know, oh, this is something else. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so you're reading the script. You know that Kate Blanchett is the lead. You've gotten past these first three monster scenes. What was it like for you then to discover that Sharon and Lydia are partners in life, partners in their careers, and all of the incredible intimate stuff that you would be doing with Kate Blanchett. It didn't scare me a bit, I, I, because I, I admire her so much that I thought we're gonna, we're gonna be, we, 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 we can do this together. You know, I was really looking forward to, uh, to also watching her exploring this immensely intricate, fascinating character. Mm but also find my own way um, of making Sharon seen, you know, a a and not just as the betrayed wife. So taking her a bit out of the victim kind of side, that was then the work 
I was really interested in to make it as rich and colorful and nuanced as possible. How's the writing going? Not so well. I keep hearing something. Schopenhauer measured a man's intelligence against his sensitivity to noise. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by emotion? Yes. Yes, it does happen. We don't want to give a, too much away for people who haven't yet seen yes, it, but exactly. you wonder how much Sharon might or might not be complicit in what Lydia Tarr is up to. Exactly. And so how fun. That was the thing to explore. Because I found it in the script, but it wasn't really worked on, let's say, you know. But I, I thought there are certain moments where Sharon knows who Lydia is and what she's probably going to do. Mm. So it, it's something that we thought about while shooting the film and hopefully open a conversation because people who watch it will think about it but in a non-judgmental way you can think about yourself am i doing that in certain moments or you know when does that happen and why does that happen and so that that was very interesting to me let me take a step back so you decide you're going to do it what is your first introduction to Kate Blanchett i'm i'm assuming you didn't know her before this did you have a Zoom? Did you meet in person? What was the first conversation? I was shooting Jack Ryan season three in Budapest uh, in spring. And I knew by then that I would do Tar later that year. There were several productions shooting in Budapest. And since it was still the pandemic, we were kind of like in exile. You know, we were all, we were all having breakfast and lunch and dinner whenever you had time, you know. So you would meet everyone there. And all of a sudden, Kate Blanchett comes around the corner and I'm sitting there with, with a, my colleague and friend, Adam, and he says, oh my God, get this, Kate Blanchett, Kate Blanchett's coming. And I was like, oh my God, I know that I'm gonna do this job, but I didn't really know, does she know me? Awkward, <laughs> you know? So I'm so tense right was, now. Yeah. <laughs> What's gonna happen? So she came walking towards me, like kind of in her thoughts, and looked up because I was sitting near the exit, looked up and her like, Nina! <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, whew! Yeah. So I, I knew, okay, ice is broken, all yeah. good. And then we met. You know, we met up, we had dinner, we had lunch, and got to know each other on a, on a very personal, private level, and started talking about Tar, of course, but, but also not at all, you know? Mm. So that made it so easy uh, later in the year to meet again and, and start working on this. I love it. Yeah, that was really great. We have a problem. I received another weird email. There's no reason to get caught up in any intrigue. I'm worried. She's starting to disappear into herself. You want to dance the mask, you must service the composer. You've got to supplement yourself, your ego, and yes, your identity. You said before one of the great things about this film is that you don't have to know much or anything about classical music. It helps if you do, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. At the same time, was it fascinating for you to learn about the importance of a concert master, which is what Sharon is in this orchestra? What was interesting about that to you? I didn't really know the whole construction or system of an orchestra and what all these positions really mean. So I learned that the concert master is the most powerful position you can have in within the orchestra because you are basically the communicator. You keep the orchestra happy and together and, and you are the translator to what the conductor tries to find the sound that the conductor tries to find and you know technically how to possibly achieve that but you have to communicate it to the whole gang yeah. and if you have that chair you're constantly being challenged so you can't lean back or anything everyone wants this position and everyone checks on you every day <laughs> and you you kind of have to hold a certain authority but also being, being a 
people's person. This is still a very patriarchal system mm. where, where slowly females break through. But um, this particular position, because it's, it, it holds so much um, responsibility, it's still something very special to, that a woman achieves that. So that, of course, told me everything about Sharon. Mm. And her skills. And her skills and her tenacity, because it's you go through hardship to get to this position mm. and you don't give it up lightly, mm. you know. So yeah, it was fascinating. So once you were on the set working with Todd Field, who, you know, was this kind of mysterious guy, hadn't made a movie in over a decade, and then the legendary Kate Blanchett, what about working with each of them was particularly eye-opening or surprising to you in their process? I felt with Todd, I'm working here with a real artist, which means he's very free and open-minded, but at the same time, he's very precise in what he's looking for. And that is a fantastic combination because it it gives you a frame within your, your working within, but within that, it's yours to explore and the way that Kate literally attacked this character. <laughs> Kate and me, we were both scared when we learned from Todd. Sadly, we have to start the shoot with doing all the scenes with the orchestra because the orchestra didn't have another slot and just these two weeks in Dresden with the Dresden Philharmonics. So for me as Sharon, that was great because I saw the whole character of Lydia evolving in front of my eyes. I mean, what she pulled off there <laughs> is just uh, mind-blowing. So, um, yeah, that, it, it was just great to, to, to watch her. You must, in fact, stand in front of the public and God and obliterate yourself. Did the two of you come up with any kind of joint backstory on the history of Lydia and Sharon, or did you just rely on what Todd had written? We did talk about the backstory, um, how they how they met, possi possibly how um, what their life was before the pandemic, in the pandemic. I mean that that was a big thing as well. You don't think about it so much, and that's totally fine in the film because it's just mentioned once, I think. But it is. They just came out as a couple with a little girl out of these pandemic times where these two met through music. So they couldn't do what they love doing. So it probably drove them crazy. You are very accomplished. You've been at this for many years. What would you say this film and this role allowed you to do that maybe you hadn't done much or at all before? I mean, this whole preparation phase, being able to do that with musicians, with with a whole gang of an, of an orchestra, then being together with Kate and Todd, who are intense, phenomenal artists, where you just go, yay, <laughs> you know, you just want to run with it. I think it's the constellation, the whole thing in itself, that it was really uh, incomparable. Now that you've gone through this entire experience and process, what is your bond now with Kate? I noticed the two of you showed up at one event, I think it was your Academy Q&A, with the exact same outfit on. What kind of fun are you having with her and, and what's the bond that you two share? She's up for all these things, you know. I just made a joke, oh, maybe, you know, we should, we should wear the same, similar thing. She said, of course, yeah, let's do it. And then her stylist, don't, 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 you know. It's just having fun a little bit with all of this. Can we expect you to dress similarly again or is that a one-time thing i don't know okay. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you come up with <laughs> nina haas it's such a pleasure to talk to you the movie is tar if you haven't seen it go treat yourself to this phenomenal fascinating film great to see you thank Thanks you so much. so much for having me Dave. thanks for watching